is 2005, and not a single hair has formed on my <laughs> The year is 2005. I've lied to my mother about being sick, and I'm staying home from school. My parents leave for work, and I fire up the family computer. It's got one gig of RAM and a Celeron processor, and I'm ready to get sweaty. And no, not sweaty like I'm going to try real hard and play some video games. Sweaty like this game is so physically demanding, I'm literally going to get sweat all over the mouse and keyboard and probably my balls by the time my parents come home. The game I'm referring to is called Guns The Duel, and it should have been the biggest eSport in the world. I know, I know, you've never heard of this game, so let me give you a quick backstory. Guns was developed in 2003 and 2004 by a small developer in South Korea called Mayet. They wanted to make a really cool third-person shooter where you could do backflips and wall runs all while spraying your opponent full of lead with various machine guns and pistols and shotguns and all the weapons. Every character was also given a melee weapon. Well, they completed development of their super cool video game in about 2004 and released it in Korea. Shortly after, they released a watered-down, but still playable, international server that the rest of the world could play in 2005. And being free-to-play at the time, the game naturally amassed a following of tens of thousands of players. What the developers didn't know was they accidentally created the most physically demanding, mechanically difficult game ever. By complete accident. Instead of talking about what I mean, I'm gonna show you. This is me in 2021 creating a character on a private server of guns, just in the interest of showing you the game's uh, user interface, the lobby, and a little bit of gameplay. This is how the game was intended to be played. As you can see, I walk like most games using WASD. You can change weapons with one, two, and three on the keyboard, and you have a few moves you can do, like wall running and backflips off of the walls and melee attacks, and obviously you can shoot your guns, but, this isn't how the game actually ended up being played. There are a series of button combinations and correct timings. Literally everything in this game could be animation canceled. All of these movements, all of these combos, while technically glitches within the game, ended up creating a product that became the most competitive and highest skill ceiling game ever created. These combos all culminated to make a gameplay style called K-Style, which was short for Korean style. The Korean players started first discovering the animation cancels and the moves as they had access to the game first before it was rolled out to an international audience. So naturally they got good at the game first. To give you an example of learning K-Style, I'm going to teach you the most rudimentary move in guns. It's called the butterfly. I'm bringing in a special guest to be my training dummy. This is Marty. I met him on guns in 2008. Today he is one of my best friends 13 years later. That's the kind of bond competitive play in this game truly formed. The point of being able to butterfly is so you can perform both an offensive and defensive action at the same time. So if you were new to this game, maybe you'd think, well, if you wanted to do that, you could just slash with your sword and then block right after, and then you would be doing an offensive and then a defensive action. That would accomplish what you're trying to do, right? Well, let me show you this. If you time your actions correctly, you can perform a jump, a slash, a dash, and a block, all in one motion. This not only allows you to have your attack and block within the same motion, but allows you to move much faster than your opponent if they didn't have the same skill level as you. It quickly puts you in a bracket above the opposition, widening the skill gap, and players who can't perform this action would have a very hard time killing you. A modern example of this would be in Fortnite. If you're really good at building, Someone who isn't good at building will probably never be able to beat you because you're just mechanically that much better than them. Speaking of Fortnite, if you played when the game was insanely popular around its release, like the first couple seasons or so, do you remember the double shotguns? Like you'd pick up two different colors of shotguns so you could equip two shotguns at the same time? Yeah, this idea 100% started in guns. If you weren't using two shotguns while you were K-styling, you were totally doing it wrong. Everyone who got competitive and played this game for the long haul used two shotguns. You're welcome, Fortnite. This is what your character and your hand movement will look like when you're successfully butterflying. Suddenly, this game's a little more intense. Now, take everything I just said and crank it up to 11. There's dozens of moves, just like the butterfly that the players discovered that they could do over the years with animation canceling and just a lot of practice and training. Slash shot, half step, late dash, forbidden step, and so many more. Now, all of a sudden, 
Gun's gameplay looks and sounds like this. Now forget everything I just told you. You need to be on a female character, dude. Everyone who's good was on a female character, and it wasn't just for the big E titties, all right? Their hitboxes are smaller, and their character took up less space in your screen. You should always play guns on a female character. It's a weird thing, but believe me, we all did. All right, you weren't weird. All of these functions and guns that I've talked about gave guns extreme longevity and simultaneously buried it in the grave that it's currently in. It gave players like myself who started in 2005 arthritis and carpal tunnel early into adulthood. Now that you have an understanding at how the developers of the game accidentally made an ultra competitive third person shooter, let's talk about this game's competitive scene. In 2006, Mayette, which if you don't remember were the developers of the game, gave a company called EG or IJJI, not sure which was ever actually truly correct, they gave them the rights to host their game for an international audience who would now have access to the full version of the game, no longer the watered down version that they were previously hosting. With the release of the full game internationally actually came a lot of features that would propel this game into truly becoming a competitive powerhouse. The clan system, while it existed on the old international server, was updated for the new host, which added a new game mode, Clan War. Clan Wars became the lifeblood of the competitive scene of guns. They also added some other stuff like quest mode, but uh, only swine really cared about questing. Unfortunately, the new hosts of the game, EG, also added in pay to win items which were basically required to play at the highest level. But for thousands of addicted players like myself, we basically just looked at the pay to win items as like a monthly subscription fee required to play the game competitively. Technically, the items were more like pay to compete rather than pay to win because if your skill level was significantly higher than the other player your wallet wouldn't matter no new player would ever jump into this game and get lucky against an experienced player but if the skill level of the players were close the pay to win items would certainly help you in that scenario anything to get a little bit extra stats or a little bit extra healing would absolutely win you a match uh, so it was pretty much required when you're trying to play at the most competitive level anyways back to clan wars a clan and guns is exactly what you'd expect in any other game. One person creates the clan, they give it a name, they can upload a custom clan emblem or avatar uh, that kind of represents the clan. They can then recruit other players to join their clan. Uh, you can make them an administrator, an administrator is kind of like a person who can re also recruit for the clan, but beyond that they don't really have any more powers. Uh, this was a nice way to build communities within the game up until Clan Wars released. But when Clan Wars did release, it became the main way to play this game competitively. In your clan's channel, which every clan has given their own channel in the lobby, uh, it kind of was weird. It would publicly display your wins and losses as a clan, your points, your rank, your all-time points. This made players even more competitive against each other, because if you lose more than you win, everyone is going to know that you're trash at the game. And they're just going to want to go against you to try to get a free win. Or even worse, the toxic community will just stop by your channel to let you know that you're fucking horrible and trash and you can't win a clan war. So, the way the clan war works is you face off against another clan by queuing up for a clan war. Your clan name goes up on the list, which shows to everyone on the server that you're looking to face off. In this private server, the name of the clan isn't publicly displayed, but back on the official server before the game died and everyone moved to private servers, you could actually see which clan was up there waiting to try to get a uh, clan war. So if you sucked, the good players would literally start yelling in their clan's chat to come to the channel so we can get a free win. It's all about trying to get those W's. There was no skill-based matchmaking. If you queue at the same time as another team, you fight, and the first team to four rounds wins the clan war. Plain and simple. The game's community, while over 10,000 players strong on any given day, still felt small. I could still remember some of the legendary clans from the early days of guns like Flower, Curse, Atropos, Anathema. My brain is just full of this crap. It means nothing to you probably, but I have a bunch of players and clans stuck in my head from when I was 13 years old. I'm 26 now. I should really try to figure that out. I could have learned algebra like a normal 13 year old, but instead I'm just stuck with a bunch of useless information. That's how you face off against another team competitively in this game, but why would you care if you win or lose? Ranking. The ranking is why you care. Every month, your clan rankings resets, and the best clans fight it out for the top spot. The top 100 clans every month were put into the quote-unquote 
Hall of Fame, which was displayed publicly on the game's website back when that's how you played free-to-play games as you went to the, the, the game's website and you click the play button. Ah, different times. Not everything was on Steam in 2008. Okay, guys. So, when the first of the month comes, you better have your ball deodorant ready because there's going to be some clans to war. The competitiveness of this game goes beyond that, though. Every three months, the host of the game, EG, who we previously mentioned, would host a clan war tournament. This is what we all prepared for in our months of button smashing, synergizing, recruiting the best clan mates we could find. It was all for the official tournaments. And the grand prize, you ask? An iPod shuffle. <laughs> can't, even, can't even say that seriously, dude. No one cared about the damn iPod. We just wanted to prove that we were one of the very best. The best clan was a clan named Sparta for most of Gun's popularity, and everyone wanted to be the clan who would finally take them down in a tournament. The formats of these tournaments varied, but were usually pretty similar to one another. Instead of a first to four rounds slash best of seven like a normal clan war, they would match up as a 4v4, which by the way, in a normal clan war, you could do 2v2, 3v3, or 4v4. The tournaments were always 4v4, and it was first to 11, which just felt more competitive. There was no fluke getting to four rounds. If you got to 11 more than the other team, it just seemed like the best team would usually win. It was magic. I managed to participate in three of these tournaments over my years from playing from 2007 to 2012-ish. These were the years that the game was active and hosted for an international audience. By the way, currently the game only exists in Korea. It's pretty dead, but there are private servers for international players or uh, North American, European, where, whatever, wherever you are. There are servers where you can play, but they're private servers not officially hosted uh, by the people who currently own the rights to guns. Uh, so yeah, every, what I was talking about, the, you know, the claim war tournaments, every second of those months was just pure heroin in my veins. I'd literally punch myself in the dick every morning if it meant I could play guns on an active server during a tournament month again. The qualifying, the nerves, the drama, the actual tournament match, all of it was just pure joy. I'd give anything to have it back. All this sounds great, right? Like I'm really hyping this game up, but why didn't guns actually become an epic esport? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Let's, let's name a few. For one, the developers didn't know what they were doing. They fell ass backwards into a successful game. If no one ever discovered K-Style and the glitches and the animation cancels, this game would have gone nowhere. It wouldn't have lasted nearly as long as it did or has. It would have been fun for 30 minutes and you would have turned it off and probably never played it again. The developers also never fixed hacks or exploits in a fast manner. And for most of the game's lifespan, this was a problem. People just hacked and exploited and that's just what it was. Every now and then you would get a patch and a week later it would be broken again just the way it was. The game was also pay to win as we touched on earlier. Uh, a modern version of this game would need to have only cosmetics purchasable, which by the way, there were so many cool cosmetics. The character customization in this game is actually super cool, but uh, the problem was at the time it cost money to get all the items you wanted to make the cosmetics like look so cool, but it was like ahead of its time, like just super cool cosmetics, all of it. Uh, but in 2006, the idea of cosmetics for a free-to-play game was a pretty foreign concept, so the game's cash shop was very predatory for the high-skilled players who were trying to compete. Uh, also, the skill cap, skill gap, not cap, skill gap, became so incredible that it forced all new players away from the game. If you're the guy who's walking around shooting your machine guns, doing backflips, tumbling around like a dummy, you're going to lose to the more skilled player every single time like without a doubt you are going to lose this game has the single highest skill cap of any game i've ever seen or played or heard of it's just insane on top of all of this and this is a real nail in the coffin the game utilizes a peer-to-peer -peer connection platform which means your shots don't register unless unless the ping is low enough for example if i'm in the united states and i'm playing against a european player we're going to have a ping of at least 60 milliseconds to each other, if not more. What that means is when I shoot, I'm going to have to shoot where I think you will be in 60 milliseconds, or it's not going to register as a hit. Even if it says hit on my screen, it probably didn't hit you on your screen because it is not server-based. It is a peer-to-peer -peer connection. This led to an even higher skill ceiling as some players got very good at predicting the movements and leading their opponents. That's what we called it, by the way. It was called leading. Uh, the developer, Mayette, stopped supporting all their games near the end of 2011, 
international service of the game stopped in 2012, and they sold the rights to a new developer by the name of Masangsoft. Masangsoft has since reopened a Korean version of the game, and has stated that they have interest in bringing the game to Steam again for the international audience. Kinda seems like a long shot at this point, as it was like two years ago that they even brought it up. But I'll tell you what, if it comes back, I will be there the first day, and I'll take a month vacation from work if I have to. I'm gonna be there. Can't wait. Guns had a lot going against it, and ultimately that's why it's dead today. There's still private servers up for the nerds like me who know there will never be another game with the same gameplay as Guns. It was such a fluid, great feeling game, high skill cap. It, it feels like a waste to never play again. I mean, like I said, all this crap stuck in my brain. I might as well do something with it. Nothing productive, but yeah. So anyway, if you're uh, genuinely interested in actually getting destroyed and trying to play and having some really sweaty nuts, I recommend playing on Freestyle Guns. That's the safest private server out there. It's the only one I can truly recommend to you. If you want it, Google it, Google Freestyle Guns. I'm sure the website will come up and you will be able to register and download and play the game. But yeah, uh, from a pure gameplay perspective, Guns would have been the greatest eSport of all time. The game was a few years early and only met success due to complete luck. So the scene just never reached its true potential. If this had happened, maybe if the, if the game released in 2010 had a little bit fresher graphics and all the gameplay was the same, you could have had something huge on your hands. There's still space in the world for an eSport that requires an extremely intense and precise mechanical ability. Obviously, the big eSports such as League of Legends, Counter-Strike, and the likes have mechanics that are tough to master, but nothing can even hold a torch to this game. When you look at a game of League of Legends or a game of Counter-Strike at, at like first glance, you can't tell if a player or a team is good just by like peeking at their screen real quick, you know? In Guns, it is painfully apparent where the skill level of the game is, like, even at a glance. If you showed me five a five-second clip of a player, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's good, or, oh no, that guy doesn't know how to play. If you made it this far into the video, I just want to thank you so much for taking so much time out of your day to listen to me talk. It means a lot to me. Uh, I'm really passionate about this game. I'm... I'm glad I finally made this video. I've been working on it for a really long time, and I'm just... I'm, I'm glad that I was able to share this with, uh more people than maybe it's been shared with in more recent years. So I'm glad to do that. I also wanted to give a huge thanks to the YouTube channel Guns Memories. I used a lot of stock footage from them in this video. If this game has interested you, if you're an ex player, if you miss the old times, you want nostalgia, please go check up their YouTube channel. It will be the first link in the description. Thank you all and good night.